Hello, everybody. So this week we are going to take a break from the um, Cinderella fairy tales, and we're going to work on some Little Red Riding Hood ones, okay? So here I'm going to start today with this one. It's pretty traditional, although you can see it's a little bit of like a modern version of it. See how she's riding a bike? Okay, and like take a look at her clothes. She has a hoodie on. So a lot of times when you see Cinderella, Little Red Riding Hood, she has a hood on, but she has a cape. So this is a little more of a modern version of it, okay? Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived at the edge of a great prairie. Because she always wore a jacket with a red hood when she rode her bike, everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood. Now one morning, as Little Red Riding Hood sat eating her favorite wheat berry muffins, she had an idea. Mom, she said, it's going to be a real scorcher today. Grandma sure would love it if I brought her some muffins and lemonade. You know how crabby she gets in the heat. Little Red Riding Hood loved visiting her grandmother. Great idea, her mother said. So Little Red Riding Hood mother packed the still warm wheat berry muffins and cold lemonade into a basket. After airing up the tires on her bike and testing the brakes, Little Red Riding Hood set out on her way. Now don't forget, called her mother, go straight to grandma's and whatever you do, don't talk to strangers. Sure, mom, Little Red Riding Hood promised. Was there anything that Little Red Riding Hood did that makes you think that she's kind of a responsible person? It made me think she was kind of a responsible person because it said that she put air in her tires and she double checked her brakes. So in other words, she wanted to make sure that if she needed to stop, she could. And that's somebody that's responsible, right? Taking some extra precautions. Little Red Riding Hood pedaled down Toad Road past the gas station, the feed store, and the old Wilson place. She waved at everyone she saw and everyone waved back. As the edge of town disappeared and the prairie began, Little Red Riding Hood zigzagged between the crops, taking the shortcut to Grandma's house. Blackbirds startled and sunflowers swayed as they whizzed by. What a nice visit this will be, Little Red Riding Hood said. Grandma simply adores muffins and lemonade. But who should be cutting through that same field and up to no good, I might add, but a very hungry wolf. When the smell of those wee berry muffins came wafting his way, the wolf's nose quivered. Gazooks, he whispered, what is that scrumptious smell? The wolf rushed toward the heavenly odor. Whatever it is, I must have it, he growled. With one giant leap, the wolf landed right in front of Little Red Riding Hood's bicycle. Aha, he roared. Little Red Riding Hood slammed on her brakes. Hey, be careful, she shouted. You could get hurt surprising someone like that. The wolf chuckled at the warning. What's in the basket, dearie, he asked with a wide tooth grin. So now she's breaking a rule. She's talking to strangers, right? Muffins and lemonade, Little Red Riding Hood said slowly, for my grandmother. But such a tantalizing smell, the wolf drooled. They must be very special muffins. Oh, they are, Little Red Riding Hood said proudly. They're my grandma's secret recipe, and they always take first prize at the fair. The wolf licked his lips. She must be a dear sweet woman, he crooned. Do you have very far to travel? Oh, no, Little Red Riding Hood answered, just over that ridge, this side of Turkey Creek. Hmm. The wolf smirked, his mouth curling up at the corners. How fortunate. So in other words, he's saying, how lucky. I have to go, Little Red Riding Hood said quickly. Grandma's waiting. The wolf turned in the opposite direction and pointed. Oh, he gasped. What beautiful flowers. Such a dear, sweet grandmother surely deserves some of those. Little Red Riding Hood nodded. Gee, you are right, she said, jumping off the bike. Grandma loves flowers. Do you think she'd like these white ones too? 
But the whistle of the prairie wind was his only response because the wolf was gone. Of course, that wicked wolf had dastardly planned. Hardy har har, he laughed wildly as he raced through the wheat. First, I surprise that feeble old granny and steal her recipe. Then I wait for the kid in the red jacket to show up with the treats. Soon, I'll hold the secret to those delectable muffins. And those two country bumpkins won't even know what hit them. His evil chuckles drifted through the fields. When the wolf arrived at Grandma's house, he found a note on the door. Little Red Riding Hood out in the field loved Grandma. This was easier than I thought, the wolf snarled. Grandma's obviously off her rocker, wandering around in the heat. Muddled brains are so easy to persuade. The wolf crackled, feeling enormously pleased with his good fortune. Poor Granny is. This makes this a little more different, right? But when the wolf searched the fields for Little Red Riding Hood, tottering Granny and all he could see was a farmer riding a tractor. Impatient, he shouted, hey, old man, where's the ancient Granny who lives in the house? The farmer, though, seemed to hear nothing. Very well, the wolf said with a snicker. I love surprising these dim-witted hicks. He began to silently sneak up behind the tractor. Then before the wolf knew what was about it, what was happening, the farmer whirled around and grabbed him by his fancy suspenders. Hold it right there, scoundrel, the farmer shouted. What in tarnation do you think you're doing? The wolf gasped and stammered. I'm, I'm looking for the frail loony muffin making granny who lives in this house. Well, Sherlock, boomed the farmer, whose grip tightened on the wolf. You're talking to her. Hmm. Now who's fooled? fooled, right? The wolf's mouth dropped open and he began to shake. My, he finally whispered, what big eyes you have, Grandma. All the better to see you skulking around my fields, Grandma answered. My, what big ears you have, Grandma, the wolf croaked. All the better to hear you coming, Grandma answered. My, what big hands you have, Grandma, the wolf groaned. All the better to crush you like a bug, if need be, said Grandma. And lucky for the wolf, Little Red Riding Hood rolled up at just that moment. Grandma, are you okay, called Little Red Riding Hood. Sure, sweetie, Grandma said. Together they marched the crumbling wolf to Grandma's kitchen. Grandma lecturing all the way. Don't you think that if there was a little red riding hood, there might be a big red riding hood? I thought I got rid of bullies like you when I moved away from that forest. Might as well have a bite to eat while we decide what to do next, Grandma said. The wolf for once was silent, his mouth full of delicious muffins. Of course, Grandma said at last. Soon after Grandma opened her own muffin shop in town, just west of the post office, the wolf, well, he was a chief baker, sales clerk, and dishwasher, being kept much too busy to cause trouble for anyone. Naturally, the wolf got to eat all the muffins he wanted, which improved his disposition enormously. That means like his attitude. But just in case he got any ideas about stealing Grandma's recipe again, Grandma always put in the last secret ingredient herself. Little Red Riding Hood, too, went to work for her grandmother, delivering muffins on her bike. Every day, rain or shine, the wolf carefully packed Little Red Riding Hood's basket. Hey, kid, he called after, he, after her as she whizzed down Toad Road. Don't talk to strangers. And Little Red Riding Hood never did again. And there is even a recipe for the muffins on the back of the book. So... That is this version of the Little Red Riding Hood. So today I want to talk to you guys about doing a retail. So we do retails. We've done them before. Let me see if I can make this. Oh, maybe this way. It's not quite as glaring. 
Uh, we've talked a lot about doing retells before, right? Retelling the story, what happened, not giving every single detail, but basically doing it across your five fingers. So I'm gonna send this to you. Um, this will be part of your ELA so you can look back on it. So if we were gonna retell this version of um, Little Red Riding Hood, the first thing we would start with is the setting. So I would say, okay, the setting of the story was uh, in a prairie or near a farm. Okay, the characters were Little Red Riding Hood, her mom, the grandma farmer, and the wolf. In the beginning of the story, Little Red Riding Hood set out on her bike to go deliver muffins to her grandmother. Oh, and lemonade, because it was a super hot day. Her mom warned her and said, don't talk to strangers. But she talked to the wolf, and she was she, un, she didn't realize it, but she was telling the wolf where her grandmother was. So then the wolf went to the farm and he thought, he thought that the grandmother had left, but it was the grandmother who was on a tractor and she grabbed the wolf and said she was ready for him, right? She had the big eyes and the big ears, right? She wasn't getting it away with, let him get away with anything. And in the end, the wolf and the granny and Little Red Riding Hood all became friends and granny opened up her own bakery and Little Red Riding Hood delivered the muffins and the wolf helped in the uh, kitchen where he was able to eat as many muffins as he wanted and Little Red Riding Hood never talked to strangers again. So I just retold that story through my five fingers. What I would like you guys to do is tell somebody at home what happened in this story, Little Red Riding Hood? Now, it can be a mom or dad, but it could also be a, a brother or a sister, okay? So if mom and dad are busy right now, maybe you can retell it to your little brother or your little sister, okay? Um, all right, and then later on today, you're gonna make a story map, okay? And it's gonna be very similar to the five fingers, okay? So it's just remembering and retelling a story that you've read or you've listened to. All right, everybody, have a great day. I'll see you later.